Let's talk about lift and how much lift you will get or can get away with on the Tahoe overlanding axle swap. I get this question a lot. In fact, it's probably one of the most common questions I get. Uh, so basically, the word lift is very subjective because every vehicle that came from Chevrolet or GMC, depending on the model and the trim level, would have had different torsion bar settings from the factory. Like for example, this is a 2004 Z71 Tahoe. That's gonna have a different torsion bar setting from the factory as a 2001 LS Tahoe. And the Silverados had different settings than the Tahoes or the Suburbans. So rather than go off of a set lift number, we always go off of actual height. So if you go from the center of the tire or the wheel up to the fender lip right there, like this one here, as you can see, is 25 inches. That doesn't matter what tire size you have. That doesn't matter anything. That's, at ride height, a solid number. And that way you can decide what lift you want or need, or you can use it to compare your, uh, um, your current vehicle to what you can probably get away with on the Tahoe for landing axle swap. Now, what I can tell you is that 24 inches is about the lowest that I would set um, a Tahoe overlanding axle swap because that would still give you adequate upward travel. That means that you will have about three and a half inches at the bump stop at 24 inches to clear for the axle to go upward at the bump stops. Now you can get away with just about anything above 24 inches, especially using the Tahoe overlanding adjustable coil mounts that weld on the frame. You can adjust how high or low you weld into the frame to fine tune the height of the front of the vehicle. Tahoe overlanding axle swap coil buckets. Holds the Dodge coil spring isolator. Uses the Dodge shock mount bolting ring. And then the Dodge shock mount bolts here. So these are perfectly flat on the back side, making it a lot easier to mount to your frame. And also, you've got right here, this little point here, there, and there, little centering points. So you can draw a line on your frame and you can adjust it to decide where you want to mount, uh, mount them on the frame just by lining up those little points on your mark. And that's why I also recommend that you set the rear first and then level the front to it. Because if you set the front first, what ends up happening is then you got to try to match the rear, hope you can find some combination of spring and spacer that will be compatible to match whatever the front ends up with. But since the front is basically infinitely adjustable with the way you weld on Tahoe overlanding coil mounts, it's a lot easier to get the rear with the available parts on the market and then weld the Tahoe overlanding coil mounts onto the frame in a way that gets it level or even possibly different from level. For example, uh, one of my customers wanted the rear to sit one inch higher because he often loaded down his Suburban and wanted it to be level once it was loaded down. So it's just easier for you to get it where you want it to do the rear first and then match the front. So like I said, if you set this measurement at 24 inches, that gives you uh, three and a half inches upward travel at the bump stops which doesn't sound like a lot for those of you that don't know, but actually that's quite a bit. Uh, for example, this video I posted recently comparing my 2001 Tahoe to a Jeep JK that had been lifted three inches and had 35 inch tires on it. All right, so what we've got here is a Jeep JK on 35s. I didn't post this part on the video, but there's really only about an inch and a half of travel at the bump stops. And a couple other relevant points. Let's see how much room they have to bump stop. You see that right there? What is that? Like, can't even get a tape measure in there, but it sure looks to be about an inch and a half. Now, you can see that just that difference in, uh, that three inches difference in available travel at the bump stop was magnified out at the wheel when articulating and flexing to be, what, 13 inches of travel at the wheel when articulating. So uh, it's definitely uh, not 
it's not a small amount of travel to say that you've got three and a half inches at the bump stop or my Tahoe having four and a half inches. I've not really been wanting for more flex or articulation uh, with the way that it's been built. I've had this built for two and a half years and it's been perfect for all the off-roading I do. Like I said, for some of you that don't know uh, about travel at the bump stop, um, it's not that uncommon to have not that much travel at the bump stop. For example, this is a factory Dodge Ram. It has about an inch of travel at the bump stop here. <laughs> Here's a newer Dodge Ram, uh, same thing, not that much travel at the bump stops. This right here is a 2022 Dodge Ram. And here's a Ford Super Duty. What is that, like an inch? Inch and a half also. And if you look at some of the other uh, builds that people are doing for solid axle conversions, if you look closely, they don't have very much of the bump stops either for upward travel, uh, honestly. And their center of gravity is usually quite a bit higher. For example, this one here is an inch and he's on 40 inch tires. So the Tahoe overlanding axle swap is spectacular in the amount of upward travel it accomplishes.